audio. I wanted to capture the audio off the camera so you guys get an idea of what it sounds like. The camera's about three feet from me. It zooms to about 25 millimeters. So you get an I'm sorry, 20 millimeters, so you get an idea of what that looks like. I'm ISO 200. It's about an hour and a half before the sun goes down. And 1 60th, an F 5.6. I wanted to do more vlogs about like what I'm shooting and how I'm shooting and how I edit at times. And I didn't want to break out the digital camera, the DSLR. It's big and bulky. I've got the battery grip. I got the L-series lenses. I mean, it's, it's heavy, but it, it's not heavy for me. I mean, I'm used to shooting weddings for 12 hours straight, carrying this massive weight. But when you're going to do a run and gun thing, which means you're on the go, you're going to run and gun and shoot and put it away. Oh, look at that. Let me film that. Okay, done. I'm going to put it in my pocket. That's what that means. You don't want to have this big, bulky digital camera, DSLR, on you. So, of course, I started looking around, and people rave about the Sony. People rave about the Canon, the G7X Mark II. It's a great camera. And being that I only shoot Canon, I wanted that camera. Long story short, I read my ass off, and I called the place that I always call to place orders for my stuff to buy the Canon point-and-shoot digital camera that everyone's using. They sold millions of these things. Great camera. And I had a couple questions that made the sales guy say, well, have you thought about the Panasonic? And right away, I'm like, Panasonic? No, no. When I buy cameras, I buy from a camera company. I have not bought Sony, although they do, they do a great job. I'm not into Sony. I like camera companies Nikon and Canon and that's really it that's just me it's got the 5 axis sta uh, image stabilizer which means you can hold it and there's literally no shake I gotta tell you guys I've used steady cams I'm really steady with holding the camera this thing is amazing it looks like it's on a steady cam if you just put barely any time in it and you just hold your breath and pan by the waist it's amazing how smooth it looks, even when walking. It's great. Then, it doesn't have any video filter in it, which means um, video filters will try and enhance your video or photography by making it more vibrant, more contrasty. It doesn't have that, so it's raw. So, because of that, the images are so much sharper and it looks so more realistic and amazing. Now, I cannot believe the image quality that this camera gives. I don't use it for photos. I've seen photos with it and they look amazing. I'll be posting more photos when I spend more time with photography. And I basically got it for video production for my YouTube channels and I love it. And I'm not getting paid to say this by the way. I just want to give you an unbiased opinion. There's a lot of videos out there and I want to let you know how I feel about this camera. Absolutely love it. One thing that blows me away, I still can't get over it, is like the quality and the crispness of the images. They're, they're razor sharp and they look like lifelike. And that's just in 1080. I haven't even shot in 4K with this thing because I always do my videos in 1080 and I export them down in Final Cut Pro to 720 HD. Looks great. 720 is technically not HD, but it another video for another time. One thing that I love is, you know, when you're shooting in a house, and it's just a little too dark and you set your settings all right and you you what you're in essence what you're doing is you are boosting the processor to bring in more light artificially so you're you're relying on the computer and the camera to boost the light and that creates video noise so if the back of me is black or you're in a black room you've seen where it looks like there's black blotches or slight blues and tiny reds, not vibrant reds, but just like very subtle, like dark burgundy, very dark blue, almost black with blotches. That's video noise because true black should be true black. And when a camera is struggling in the dark, the processor, by boosting the light artificially, it's creating that digital noise. It's not good. This camera, I shot inside the house when it was dark outside by lamplight and I was on the other end of the couch where the lamp was not. I knew I was asking for trouble. I knew I was going to have the blotchiness and the video noise. Didn't happen. 
it looked like in the movies where it looked like I was sitting in a darkened room by a lamp. You know? Not like your typical video camera or your iPhone where you film in the dim light area and it's dim light with blotches. This camera's awesome. It's a four-thirds camera and they excel at that. Another thing I really like about this camera, which I didn't really care about at the time, because they're just going to be for pointing and shooting and vlogging, was it has interchangeable lenses. I'm glad I got it, because I will buy a couple lenses. They're still really expensive. Now this kit lens, the 12 to 32 millimeter, is outstanding. The only other lens I'm going to buy, after much research, is the Panasonic 25 millimeter prime lens, no zoom, f1.7. The aperture f stop that you've all heard about, for those of you who don't know, just a quick little lesson, the lower the number, the bigger the aperture, the lens, the iris opens. And when that iris opens more, it allows in more light. So you can shoot in a darker room if you have a larger f-stop which means a, a smaller number so the smaller number the better also that smaller number means the background is blurred out so if you're shooting someone you know how you get that cool background blur but only your image is in focus you're gonna get that every time you use a smaller number it's also called a fast lens also known as fast glass so I'll be getting a 25 millimeter I like shooting wider so I almost got the uh, 17 millimeter the 20 millimeter is slow and the autofocus mechanism inside the lens makes noise so that's not going to be good for video production one last thing the audio that you're listening to is strictly off the camera it's got a really good uh, tight bass response very good mid-range in the upper range the high end the treble it's not tinny it's just right so if you're interviewing someone or just talking to someone or doing something like this now, it's absolutely perfect. Um, I always like to enhance the audio when I'm editing regardless of what I'm using and here's what that sounds like now. I like to EQ, add a little bit of compression, boost the levels, make it sound as full as I can for you guys. Um, but that's what I like to do. Also here is what color correction looks like. I like to add a little bit of um, film look to my images depending on what I'm filming so that's what this looks like so now you've got boosted audio you've got you know boosted video with the film look now that I've spoiled you let's go back to the regular camera now it, now that you saw what the other image looks like you're probably like oh that looks like garbage T I'm telling you every camera you're gonna think that way about so anyway don't worry too much about the audio quality on a camera because don't rely on a camera to capture your audio. For this, no big deal. But if I'm going to do an interview or something like that, I would take a, an LED light and mount it. It's got a hot shoe at the top. You can mount the LED light. And I would take my Tascam digital stereo recorder. It's outstanding. I'd screw it onto a tripod, and I'd face its microphones towards me and the guest I'm interviewing. Then, when I'm editing, I would just take that audio, put it on top of the video, and bind them together. Video coming on that soon. I would recommend getting another battery or two because these batteries last about 45 minutes. Absolutely love, love, love this camera. The white balancing is great. The lenses are fast. Um, I shoot everything in manual mode, but the auto modes are great as well. You've got black and white, you've got sepia, you've got everything. And they don't look like standard camera filters for like old movie and black and white. It looks lush and just full contrasting the black and white looks black and white it looks great I love this camera I'm not gonna say it again but I do so without further ado let me take some video as the Sun goes down we're gonna get some shaded areas I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be filming um, and uh, if you like the channel subscribe if you have any questions please ask them below and uh, I respond to everybody give it a like thumbs up subscribe I'll see you guys next weekend so here's the front it's a little bright see the sun's going down so what we're gonna do I'm gonna turn this down to look at that f22 when I film I like to keep the ISO as low as possible right now it's at ISO 200 I never shoot higher than 800 and it's 160th now it's 1 100th frame 
one sixtieth. I always keep it at one sixtieth. Here's ISO two hundred. One sixtieth. Let's just mess with the aperture. Here's three point five. It's blasted out. Four. Four point five five. Five six six three seven one eight f nine point zero f ten f eleven f thirteen f fourteen. The sky's coming into play more. F sixteen f eighteen f twenty f twenty two. I like f twenty two a lot, but then the car is in the dark a little bit. So this is too blown out. Sky is too blown out. So I would say if you're gonna shoot this scene. And you want to focus on this, I would say F14 or F18, F22. F22 is going to be awesome. So between a ISO of 200 and an F-stop of 22, you're going to get a really nice saturated image. Really great video. So let's go out and shoot some stuff before this battery dies. This is ISO 200 always. 160th f7.1 look how smooth this image stabilizer is so let's blast it out it's f5 we're gonna bring this down to f22 look at this look at this amazing video I'm walking. Look how smooth this walk is. This is an autofocus lens. I'm focusing by tapping on the LCD on the back. Here's a 12 millimeter. Here's 32. I'm three feet away from the hydrant. Here's 12 millimeter. Here's 32. 